She lost her husband, a man of the past that was supposed to be there for her in the present. And she lost her son who should have been there for her in the future. But she meets the rock of ages, the ancient of days, the one that was, is, and shall always be. And when the Lord saw her, the text says in verse 13, he says, it says when he saw her, uh, and not when she saw him, but when he saw her. Can I drop three dots here? He sees you way before you see him. Mm. Stop acting like he doesn't see you. Beloved, he sees you. I, I can shout on that alone. He sees me. He sees me. I want it to sink in. He sees me. Yes, he does. He sees your tears. He sees your heartache. He sees your disappointment. He sees your fears. He sees your worry. He sees your depression. He sees your loneliness. He, he sees you. Now, now, if nobody else sees you, you got to know that God sees you. He sees. That's why David says, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my rock. The Lord is my shield. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my Lord. The Lord sees you. And if you, can, look, you can hold to that assurance and, and hold that assurance uh, close to your heart that he sees you just like a shepherd uh, sees his sheep. Uh, God sees you. Uh, and that's why I like the old gospel classic by Milton Brunson. It said, because the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need. Uh, he lets me rest in the meadow's grass uh, and he leads me beside the quiet storms. Uh, he restores my failing hand and that's why I'm safe in his arms there uh, because he sees you. Oh God, okay, okay. I, I can show See, too many folk think he doesn't see you. Think he's forgotten about you. Think he is not on assignment to come check on you. But the text says he sees her. She don't see him. Way before you even know you, he's looking. He's looking. The text says in verse 13 that Jesus saw her. Yes, the shepherd sees you. He sees her, and the text says his heart went out to her. That means that his compassion reached her. Her situation, underline this, found a place in her heart. My God, my God. Your situation has found a place in God's heart. Your situation is not just in God's mind. It's in God's heart. It just doesn't, look, he just doesn't know about you, but he cares about you. See, it's one thing to know about something. It's an entirely different matter to care. And beloved, he cares. I, I, I see, let me teach for a second. The, the, the text says his heart went out to her. This same phrase will show up again in chapter 10 when Jesus is teaching about the Good Samaritan. The idea is that many people saw the person who was in need on the side of the road, but only one actually helped the person. The point is that knowing and caring are two different things. You can know and not care. But if you care, you know and you want to help. Uh, Jesus just doesn't know. He, he doesn't just knows. He cares and he chooses to help. Jesus said his heart goes out to her. her. Her situation, and when I thought about that this morning, is that my situation is not just in God's mind, but my situation is in his heart. I, don't, I can't even preach it like I felt it. Because God said, I'm, you, you're in my heart, Ralph. It's one thing to be in somebody's mind. It's another thing to be in somebody's heart. See, it, when you're in somebody's heart, they'll do stuff that their mind tell them not to do. <laughs> Y'all don't believe me? In real life, look, you'll say your mind will say sometimes, I ain't going to help them because I ain't going to help them. But because they're in your heart, your children not always doing right. And in your mind, you're saying, I'm about to let them have it. But because they're in your heart, you give them a second chance. Oh, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. It's one thing to be in somebody's mind. It's another thing. The Bible said his heart went out to her. I mean, he extended grace to allow her situation into his heart. And when you're in God's heart, justice might say, nope. But because you're in his 
heart. See, in the mind, there's justice. In the heart, there's grace. Ah, Jesus sees her in the text as his heart goes out to her, and he says, don't cry. Now, I must say, that is an unusual thing. We learn when approaching someone who is grieving and bereaved, we usually tell them that tears are necessary for the grief process and, and important for your emotional health. But Jesus says, don't cry. Now, this goes against everything we learn in seminary. We told them, tell them to cry and tell them to go through the grief cycle. And Jesus says, don't cry. He just in interrupted this funeral with some crazy advice. Tradition said that when you run up on a funeral, you were supposed to join in with the mourning process. You're supposed to start crying too and follow along. Now, in our day, we pull over to the side of the road out of respect. Well, at least some people do. But in their day, you were supposed not only stop, but join in in the funeral procession and cry along with the family. Well, Jesus breaks tradition and tells this woman, don't cry. And, and, and I could just end my sermon right there by telling someone, God says, don't cry. Not because it isn't painful, not because it doesn't hurt, not because your problems haven't rocked your world, not because your heart isn't broken. No, don't cry because you don't want to miss what's about to happen. Uh, don't cry because you, you don't want your eyes are too watery when the, so you miss this blessing. Uh, don't cry because he's about to turn your mourning into dancing. Don't cry because the best is yet to come. Uh, don't cry because uh, God is not finished. Uh, he wants you to see clearly what he's about to do. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you're crying, you're not going to be able to see uh, the blessing that's coming. Uh, if your head's hung down, uh, you might not see how he's going to work it out. Uh, so he said, don't cry. I don't want you to miss what I'm about to do. Don't cry. Wipe your tears. Uh, I want you to have a high definition, 4K picture of this blessing I'm about to ring out in your life. Uh, it ain't that you shouldn't cry. It ain't that the tears ain't worthy. It ain't that the tears aren't necessary. But if you're crying too much, uh, you're about to miss this blessing, baby. You're not going to see how I do it. And then when somebody asks you how you did it, you say, I was wide to wipe my eyes uh, and I missed it. So he says, don't cry because I want you to be able to tell it and tell it right and tell it in high definition. Now, I don't know the mind of God, so I can't say for sure but I think God just gives this woman a blessing simply because he wanted to stop her tears. Now, I mean, I know from a deeper theological perspective that this miracle is to show people that Jesus was greater than Elijah and Elijah, the great prophets who raised widow's sons in the books of 1 Kings and 2 Kings, and this was to show him that he was king, uh, and, and it was a symbol of God's grace. Uh, uh, and uh, and this, I know this was a show that God can bless us over and over again, and how that even in, 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 in how in the latter days we will all get our loved ones back. Amen. I understand that. That's a deeper theological picture. It's a sign of the resurrection that when all is said and done, uh, you will get your loved ones back that have gone on before you. For the Bible says, the dead in Christ shall rise, and we shall be reunited with them. So if you lost a son, guess what, baby? You're going to get your son back. If you lost a child, you'll get them back. If you lost your mama, you're going to get them back. I understand that. Amen. But I know all of that. But I also think that God did all that and just blessed her anyway uh, because he's good like that sometimes. Uh, the Bible says Jesus reached over and touched the coffin. He touched the coffin and said, young man, rise up. The text says that the young man rose up and began to talk. Look what the text says. Uh, now, I don't know what he said, uh, but he rose up talking. The Bible said Jesus gave the boy back to his mother. He gave her her hope back. He gave her her future back. Uh, he gave her her strength back. Uh, he gave her her son back. Uh, he put a smile back on her face. Uh, he put joy back in her heart. He gave her her son back. And beloved, I've got good news. Uh, God is about to interrupt your procession of pain and heartbreak and inter intervene on your behalf. He's about to awaken something that you thought was dead. He's about to raise something up that you thought was down for the count. I don't know what God is going to give you back, uh, but the words you need to hear, he stopped by to let me tell you, don't cry. Stand to your feet. That's all I got for today. <laughs>